What's up ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, boys and girls, nans and granddads, whoever you are, welcome to the good, the bad and the stupid. It's Monday the 13th of January. Uh, we're going to get straight on with it because like you, I'm very busy, got lots to do and I'm going to cram this uh, podcast in with all the best and shittest of the news of the day. Uh, whatever I found that was slightly interesting. Uh, but the main news that's hugging the papers at the moment is uh, Prince Harry is like, um, at the very least, they're fucking ramping up their uh, their fame, whether it's infamous or famous. It's, uh, they're, they're, they're growing their um, uh, brand, if you like. I think they uh, are looking to, uh, the Queen and that are meeting today about what their um, position is going to be, which is basically damage limitations, because they want to fuck off and earn their own money. I think they want to do like a, Posh and Becks or something, you know what I mean? Where the brand just makes a fortune. And they will. They'll probably fucking double that. Whereas they're tied into uh, royal salaries and stuff. So I bet, I bet my prediction, they'll ditch the uh, ditch the salaries, ditch the royal salaries. They'll still do some royal duties, but they'll want to earn their own money and be on the side. But it's a little bit naughty in the sense that, you know, their fame comes on the back of the royals. Well, his does anyway. And obviously she's married and become a princess as such. Is she a princess? I'm not quite sure. But she's she's married into the royal family. So her uh, her um, stock, if you like, has gone fucking through the roof as well. So, you know, it's a win-win for them, I guess. Um, so the royal family are having to uh, deal with it the best as they can. <clears throat> but there's a picture in the paper earlier... Uh, Showing that uh, when Prince Harry met, when they, there's some some um, what's it called celebrity kind of do charity do or whatnot, and the Lion King's London uh, the Lion King's London premiere, and uh, when they were meeting all the uh, the people, uh, Harry bumped into or spoke to the the boss of Disney, and they've got him blatantly on camera as well, like talking uh, to him, and like they've overheard what he said, and he's going, oh, did you know that uh, my wife does voiceovers. She'd probably be interested to, yeah, what, 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 you look surprised, yeah, no, she loves doing voiceovers, she'd love to do Disney voiceovers for you, and the bloke's like, oh, okay, well, we'll, we'll look into it then, lo and behold, she did a voiceover for, became a voiceover artist for Disney, so, just goes to show, people in high places, but he's blatantly fucking asking, you know what I mean, going, give her a job, the guy might not have wanted to, but he's like, pressure, isn't it, when the, if a royal saying, fucking give her a job, you know, you want to you want to keep keep in with people, didn't you? So uh, he probably had no choice, man. That was a strong arm tactic. I'm not knocking it. Whatever works, but you know that's how it works, isn't it? When you when you when you're up there, it's easy to get your your kids or your family or whatever else jobs. But that, what they should have done is not do it on camera because we know that shit goes on behind the cameras behind the scenes, if you like, but not blatantly in front of the cameras. He's going, oi. Can everybody just can everybody hear me? Can give my wife a voiceover if you don't mind, please. I don't know what the voiceover was, whether she was playing a princess or whatever. But uh, anyway, but that was before, and that was when they're not meant to be earning money off their own, uh, you know, independence. I don't think. Fuck knows. I don't know. Who am I? Royal correspondent? I've no idea. Ask Elton John. Apparently, he knows everything because. Uh, the Duke, uh, print, as he's called at the moment, Prince Harry, uh, uh, has, has um, been ringing out on John and uh, using him as an ear. Why out on John? I mean, I used to know, I suppose he's a friend of Diana's, wasn't he? So he's almost a, a family friend. So oh, well, I'll let that one pass. But he's been telling out on John or asking out on John or using him as a shoulder to, uh, to tell what was going on, apparently. Whether out on John had anything to do with the. The elbow, who knows? But uh, you know, Charlie Boy would probably be like, "Yeah, that's fucking the Elton. He was always sticking the sticking the oar in when I was with Diana. <laughs> now he's fucking doing it with my son. You never know what's going on." Um, anyway, let's move on to uh, uh, more uh, interesting, more light-hearted stuff, should I say? Um, if we ditch the dot, what's this one? Is oh, I forgot. What, I didn't fucking get a chance to read this. Am I going to do that one? Oh, it's suggesting that most of us have given up on our New Year's resolutions already by this week. That's a fucking poor showing. I haven't even started mine yet, so I'm going to be one above you because uh, 
That was the best way to do it. Don't start your New Year's resolutions until past when most people are meant to have uh, given up. It's only 13 days in. I mean, people just set themselves to, uh, to put, put too much pressure on themselves, isn't it? You probably should just fucking, uh, you know, just go for moderation or whatnot. But he says here, what's this, uh, what they're saying now, what you can do to keep things that are good for you. And he says, I haven't read these, so I'm doing this random, but Brits have sex on average just once a week. So commit to romping with your partner at least three times a week. Nucky is a proven mood booster and study for the Queen's University. I found having, this, having sex this often could halve your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Or double your risk. Depending on how you look at it. it, depends on if you fucking how your diet's going and all that stuff, doesn't it? So one half of the couple might be reading that and going, right, that's it. We're going to have sex three times a week. The other half is going, oh shit, why did I let her read that? Or him, or him read that? Should I say? <laughs> you never know which one of them might be the tired one of the two. But um, yeah, why not? Fucking seven times a week. What's what we read about three times a week? Come on. Seven times a day, and it that's what Craig David would fucking have you doing. What's what was his? I don't know what his was, but he was uh making love by Wednesday and Thursday. Fuck knows. Craig David um sang a song about fucking shagging, is all I remember, but uh, I don't know whether it was uh, it got it didn't float my boat, let's put it that way. Um, have a gloomy, have a, a book a holiday that's a boost, uh, it's a mood booster. Um, get into the spirits. If you can't manage dry January, don't worry. Research shows uh, varying to visit the pub regularly and not just because the booze makes you feel better. Visiting your local drinking hole makes you happier and more sociable. And more pissed, obviously, because you're always in the pub. You can, unless you can go to the pub or be like that pub that's just opened um, in London. They've just opened a brew dog that's non-alcoholic. I showed it a picture of it. I showed a bit of it online, and uh, it actually looked quite good. Well, it looks like a standard brew dog bar, but all the beers are uh, non-alcoholic. But it just looked like the pints and everything, and the experience all looked the same. So it could be good. You know, it might be one of them ones we can only handle one or two because the taste ain't right. But uh, bag of bargain. We all know the power of a little retail therapy. Um, this is all stuff to make you feel happier to beat the blues in January. So. Going shopping for a bargain in January. Well, you got the January sales, ain't you? But you got those people who just go fucking mental and blow all their wages and everything, and they come back, and then all of a sudden you've cheered yourself right up, and then all of a sudden you're fucking down again because you just it's a, you fed yourself for a, that one night, haven't you? And next thing you know, you're down and you need more money for shopping again. So uh, what's the other one? Going to the cinema is good for the brains. We've said that one the other day. Having a ball, vow to watch more football. Well, some people ain't going to like that. Um, and what's it say? The effort involved in concentrating on a game is equivalent to moderate cardiovascular, a moderate cardiovascular workout. Or a fucking, or those people who get proper stressed and that. Isn't that guy who was fucking smashing his telly up and everything? When um, <laughs> somebody stitched him up. It was a, it was a prank, and they kept turning the TV off when the when it was just about to score or something was going on, and he got up and smashed, put his foot through the TV and just fucking smashed everything because he was trying to work it and he couldn't, and that was fucking about from behind the scenes. Fucking brilliant that was. I hope it wasn't the real TV. They must have like switched his TV for that one. Um, enjoy a thirty minute episode of a sitcom daily. Only fools and horses cheers me up all day long. If I can watch that. Watch that once or twice a day, a week or whatever. It's as good as sex. Not quite. Uh, but no, just uh, cheers me. I love that program. Um, where are we going? Oh, we're going to move on from that. There's more, but I can't uh, can't just fucking do 10 minutes on that. Um, snowflakes are claiming the British Museum is racist because of its collection of valuables from around the globe. The popular venue attracts 5 million venues, but millennials have vented their fury. The British Museum displays much of the most historically important plunder acquired over centuries of British colonialism, um, including the infamous Elgin Marble and the Parthenon and Easter Island sculpture and the Rosetta Stone. And they label it racist and glorifying coloni colonialism. They're just trying to fucking flex their brains, aren't they, basically? I mean, all right, we all know fucking 
shit was plundered and and stolen and moved around and whatever else. But now it's all. This is hundreds of thousands of years ago. It's all still cultural artifacts and whatever, regardless of whatever. Maybe they should be in their own country, but nobody's on Easter Island, so somebody's got to have it. But uh, you know, these are the the, the, his, the museums are about history. They are history, good or bad. It's historical fucking objects. So do one, whoever you are. M Boo, his name is M B O O. So they're just picking up on certain people who are, must be talking on Twitter and stuff. Who are like uh, you know showing their history that they got something out of their history exams or or degree now that they're working in fucking Waitrose or what you know. Unfortunately, the fucking world has been a bad place and it still is. You know, there's shit like that going on even now. Um, anyway, I just think if people want, if the original owners want them back, so be it. You know what I mean? If it belongs to England or belongs to Greece or belongs to... If, if, somebody, if somebody had something of English heritage in the Syrian Museum or whatever the fuck, you'd want it back, wouldn't you? Um Batman star Burt Ward had to take pills to shrink his manhood. Well, fucking, you know, nice problem to have, Burt. But he played Robin anyway, and he had to wear those, like, that, them tight pants and everything, didn't they? Them two apparently were fucking all over the show. They were happy. They were, like, right buzzing. They were, like, didn't need no mood <laughs> mood boosters or whatever. They had women chucking themselves at it. Remember they were the only fucking... Uh, they were the biggest TV programme in the 60s and that, wasn't they? And like, they were the only blokes dressing up in capes and shit at the time. And, like, fucking women were apparently all over them at parties and whatever. Hey, I'm just saying, it must have been a fucking a buzz and half. I don't know how old they were at the time. But, uh, anyway, he, used, he had, like... Uh, he had problems with his large bulge, so they had to give him tablets to shrink it. You know what I mean? It was like, he said he took them for a while, but then he thought... Um, that the, that might be bad for him. He thought that might be bad for him, might stop him having children. So he just used some other way of uh, disguising it. But uh, yeah, so there you go. As I said, nice problem to have. I think I'll be taking tab. I'm, most people are taking them to, to fucking grow it, <laughs> or taking something to, or putting something down to make it look bigger. He's trying to do the opposite. Anyway. That's, that's uh, Robin. Batman was the same. I think, well, the same Batman had to put stuff down in his trousers. He was doing it to uh, to boost it, but towels. Hot towels. Probably to fucking for all the shagging they were doing in the 60s. Come on, Wayne. Don't be fucking... Uh, let's not get crude. Um, right, we've got... Uh, i got loads... Oh, surgeons... Speaking of... Well, now we're on the subject... Surgeons are treating a record number of men for broken penises. Not broken hearts into January. We've already had the divorce day. So there's people with broken hearts and now there's people with broken penises. So uh, older fellows using Viagra mainly to keep, to keep up, maybe partly behind the rise. Others may be snapping their manhoods by imitating risky online porn. <laughs> What's the fucking risky online porn? Is that like... Um, What's it called? Like uh, extreme ironing, you know, when they try and get the ironing board in some fucking weird place and then hanging off a cliff or something and try and get the ironing board out. It's, I don't even get that at all, but is that what these risky online porn uh, moves are? There's only so many fucking angles you can go for, isn't there? I mean, like, are they talking about swinging from stuff or, you know, fucking... Or, or jumping off the wardrobe onto the bed or something like out of uh, that cartoon. What was that cartoon? Jungle Burger or something like that. Um, remember Jungle Burger? A cartoon from the 80s. It was a cartoon all about like... It was a sex cartoon. It was fucking X-rated. Brilliant. Really funny. If you haven't seen it, millennials, stop moaning about the fucking artefacts in the British Museum and go and find Jungle Burger on your streaming site. It's hilarious. It's probably dated to fuck, but there's an army of penises at the end and they're all fucking... And shoot to fire at the art, uh, at the enemy. They're like shooting semen out and like all the fucking penises are going like that. Brilliant. Um... And when they're, at, when they're shagging, the, the cheetah, the monkey's wanking on top of the wardrobe. Anyway, I'm sorry about this, but this is the way it's going, I'm afraid. Um, 
I didn't start it. This is what people suggested to get people put a smile on people's face in January. Uh, anyway, so uh, people are having. It happens when it hits a hard object, like a pubic bone, and then tubes inside rupture or fracture and pop. Most cases, so fuck here now. Something looked like a bruised aubergine, and they repair. They repair with stitches. Uh, restores function. Doing nothing, however, sees a high chance of scarring and Peroni's Peroni disease, a wonky willy. Fuck you now. So, uh, you know, think about that, do you? You know what I mean? You're getting down. So now, on the back of that, everyone's going to be all like, you know, slow-mo, aren't they? Like, assume while that's still in your brain, you're going to be like moving away from the, uh, the fucking risky moves and doing like the back to the missionary position and taking it easy. So... There you go. Watch out. Nobody likes a wonky willy. Um, well, not unless that could make you do fucking even more risky moves, then you can create your own then. It'd be hard to, hard to beat. Um, what are we going to talk about now? I'm fucking in a rush to be somewhere. This is why my head's going. Um, suspicious, wives, suspicious wives are contacting Cafe Tease Me. As a cafe called Tease Me after reading the name on their husband's bank statements. Dozens have wronged the business, fearing their other half has been playing away <laughs> or even booking sexual services on an adult website. Several fellas have taken their missuses to the eatery and, and uh, just to prove that they're not misbehaving. So that's a tongue in cheek fucking name, and they've probably done that on purpose so that that situation happens. Uh, we've had people in who've told us their partner thought they'd been on a dodgy website or something. What about the ones who were taking like some other mystery lady out there? You know what I mean? If it says like, what did you buy? Two? Did it say two lattes, two lattes and two sponge cakes? You'd be like, who's the fucking other person you've been buying sponge cake for? <laughs> or, or like, you know, something that might be obvious a lady would have or something or other. So there you go. That's a, do you get it? Tease me. Tease me. It's a sexual theme going on through this one, isn't it? It's not all meant to be. Um, was it the Ch uh, National Trust buses are planning to buy up the child's childhood homes of stars such as Freddie Mercury and David Bowie? They reckon visitors want to see places where real people grew up rather than posh piles. Um, well... But bonus for the people who live in it already, because if they come along and say, right, we want the house off you, you'll get paid a fortune more than it's worth. Or you just sit there and go, nah, I'm keeping fucking David Barry's house, thank you very much. I'll do the visiting and I'll charge people. That's what you got to do if you own Freddie Mercury or David Barry's house anyway. Turn it into a fucking shrine and just get people coming through the door, paying. They'll make a fortune. you make a fortune. Don't let the council do it, fucking hell. You know what I mean? It's like if you answer something, or either that, if you let them do it, make them pay. Um, well, I'm going to finish up on a couple more. De Nick Knowles has vowed never to perform music uh, in public again. There is a god. Nick Knowles has been told by his fans, or by I don't know if they're fans, but people who follow him to stop singing. Uh, we don't like your music, basically. And he said he's bowed down to the pressure and he's decided that he's not going to be playing music in public again. Because he brought out an album, didn't he? And uh, I don't think it, fuck it. I think people were using it to, uh, to I don't know, make spiders run out of the house and fucking cats and shit like that. Fuck knows what. Um, but um, I don't think people were taking it to it as uh, he's got no music fans. Put it that way. So he's not going to be coming to any concerts near you. So that's a good thing. Um, Robert Carlyle would love to do a third train spotting film. That would be brilliant. We'd love to see more train spottings. There's a book apparently called The Blade Artist, so there's a story there. And Begbie's fucking man mental, isn't he? I mean, he's a horrible character, but it's fucking funny. Uh, he's a right nasty git, but um, it'd be good to see where, where what goes after that because I've not read any further books anyway. So uh, I don't even read the first one. The first book was all written in Scottish. I wanted to read it, but. Um, I think I started to read it, but it was all like you got to kind of get into that mindset of how Scottish people talk, and it's written that way. So uh, I gave it up in the end, just watched the film. Um, Jude Law isn't worried about going bald because he doesn't rely on his looks to get in film roles anymore. 
the actor says it's wonderful not having to be the golden boy and to be chosen for characters for, with more depth. It amuses me to think that at this age I feel happy in my skin. That's one way of saying I'm fucking fucked it and I, my hair's gone and uh, I'm no longer the pretty boy of film so now I'm getting offered films based on whatever I can fucking whatever I can uh, play basically well I can play anything now I don't have to play the pretty boy I get it but at the same time he's, he's, he's accepted his fate but he's 47 so he's uh, you know he's close to my age I'm loads young, younger than him but still uh, but he's lost his hair well, he's, he's he was, he was always kind of semi kind of bald in anyway, wasn't he? But he looks quite good for his age anyway. So, um, so he's cool. He's cool with it. We've all got you got no choice of it. You just got to fucking roll with it. You got no whatever comes your age, your wrinkles, your bags, your fucking. It just wear them like a badge of honour. You know what I mean? If you if you look like if you look terrible, just say I've had a fucking great life. I think uh, my friend said uh, when somebody said to him about um, his, his wrinkles or something, he said, "No, what did he say? His bags or something?" And he said, "They're Louis Vuitton." <laughs> so, um, you know, champion your fucking your uh, your your fucking you your character marks that come along with age. Um, what the fuck am I talking about? Right, I'm going to finish up on one more thing. I think if I can find one. Old bust, yeah, there we go. And this lends itself to that anyway. Old fool, only fools and horses star Buster Merrifield was a banker until he was fifty-seven, and then he started going to acting classes uh, before he, no, he joined an amateur dramatics group, and then he was cast for the iconic role in nineteen eighty-five. So there you go. It doesn't matter what you look like; you can get. And he fitted the bill of Uncle Albert because he, he probably would. He probably, I don't know if he was going for like bird's eye or anything else. There weren't much that probably would have fitted. Is uh, uh, that look that he had, but um, unless he grew it specifically for uh, Andy Fulton Horses. But anyway, so there you go. He didn't give it, he just knew Lisa Life, new new direction, 57, and uh, he loved it. And he was fucking brilliant, wasn't he? Uncle Albert, absolutely brilliant. Granddad was always the best, but Uncle Albert was a very close second. Anyway, I've enjoyed that, and hopefully, there's been some good parts to it. So uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. See you later. Bye bye.